thank you all for being on here. Um, yesterday uh, was a tough day and um, sick about it. And I care deeply about everyone involved. I care deeply about everybody in our program. And uh, we have and, and will continue to, to build a culture that's relationship driven. Um, as I said in my statement last night, we have to respect the university's process. Um, and, and I will not uh, talk further until it's complete. Um, I'm confident that it's going to be uh, a quick process. Um, I hope you respect that. Um, that's really all I can, can talk about as it's an ongoing matter. Um, I also want to say uh, thoughts and prayers with, uh, with family and friends of Betty Pushkar, um, who, who obviously was extremely um, uh, giving of her time and, and finances. So one, first time I had an opportunity to speak publicly since that, so I wanted to say that. Um, a high number of our high, high percentage of our players um, are back in Morgantown taking part in voluntary workouts. Um, they're voluntary. We're not allowed to have any contact with them. Um, I want to say this. I, I have full confidence in our medical and our athletic training staffs. Um, we respect the virus, and that's what we continue to say in our program is respect the virus. We respect the virus. Um, we understand that it was, you know, probably um, – virus uh, took hold sometime November-ish, somewhere around that matter. And, and it's a, we gain knowledge about it increasingly, um, but we respect it. Uh, we're going to be proactive and, and, and take every necessary step uh, and precaution to ensure that, the, that our players are, are health and healthy and, and, and safe. It's a, uh, so I'm going to, I want to give you some data here and hope you make sense of this. Um, I'm not a medical expert. Y'all know this. We've had a bunch of meetings. We haven't done it in a, in a few weeks, but we've talked about this. I'm going to try to give you an update the best I can. Uh, I can't say names due to HIPAA. And I think you all understand that. But to this point, uh, we've conducted 167 tests, 33 staff, uh, 134 student athletes. We've had two positive student athletes. Um, and I want to state this, neither of those student athletes uh, participated in voluntary workouts. Um, we've got a protocol where they come in at, if they come from out of state, they've got to be quarantined for five days and then the testing process goes through. Um, but we've had two positives, neither, neither of which have participated in voluntary workouts. We quarantined a group after our first positive uh, due to contact tracing. They all retested yesterday and were negative. Um, and we got another big group that's that's going to test on Friday. Um, part of this, um, the precautions we're taking, um, our student athletes are not uh, in the indoor, or not in the, they're not in our uh, the push car facility. Um, our workouts are outside. I think we released the video that showed we're we're doing our weightlifting in the concourse, uh, running outside. Uh, we're practicing social distancing. Our guys are wearing masks. Um, like I said, nothing inside the building. We continue to do virtual meetings. That's how we're conducting all team and position meetings is on Zoom, just like we're on right here. Um, July 13th will be our uh, – will mark the return of our staff uh, and players to the Pushkar Center. Um, and that will actually be the, the first time as a staff that we return back, return back to work there. Everybody's – for the most part, I've been working from home. I've gone in a few afternoons, but that's about it. Um, and staff will have to go through the same protocols our players do. And uh, the uh, the renovations, I know I've had some questions about the renovations. The renovations uh, have continued. They're, they're on schedule, to my knowledge. Um, and so that's kind of some updates. I want to I wanna announce some awards. Uh, and we haven't, and actually this is, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to our players about it. Um, and I wanted to do this and I wanted to recognize we normally do this at, at the spring game, but due to the uh, COVID uh, pandemic, we didn't have our spring game, as, as y'all know. So uh, Mike Joseph and our strength conditioning staff have chosen their Iron, Iron uh, Mountaineer Awards. And this is a huge deal in our program. If you look at through back through who's won this award, uh, Going back to the origin, it's it, it's a it, it's really a telltale who some of the the best players are and the hardest workers. And but the winners for this year are 
Dante Bonamico, Noah Guzman, James Gemitter, and Bryce Wheaton. So the Iron Mountaineer Awards, Dante Bonamico, Noah Guzman, James Gemitter, and Bryce Wheaton. So um, big congrats to them. And, and those are that's that's those are chosen by our strength condition, Mike Joseph and our strength conditioning staff. So I'm proud of those guys. Those are those are earned awards. Um, and so proud of them. Also want to announce the winner of our Nikolic Award that goes to the top walk on. And this is picked by our coaching staff. And for this year, it is Usman Kamara. And Usman is a is a guy that's graduated, he's in our NBA program. Um, he, he's going to be a big time success, not only going to help us on the football field this fall, but he's in, in, in life and his professional career um, and really a, a great ambassador for our program. And he earned that not only by his performance on the field on, on special teams, but, but also, and he's, he's already awarded, he's already earned a scholarship. You all know that, but he was a walk on. And so proud of him for that. Usman Kamara. Um, also, I'd be in trouble if I didn't announce this. It is my anniversary today, so happy anniversary to Brooke. It is 14, and uh, I'm not even sure I've seen her today. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I want to say that. So, with that, I'll open it up to questions. All right. Just a reminder, if you want to ask a question, use the participants feature and then click raise hand. First question comes from Coach Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. Well, Neil, I'll start out with uh, I certain you've gotten some reports from the strength staff in terms of how the voluntary workouts are going. I mean, you were worried our kids going to be in shape when they got back. What, what are the early indications? Greg, I'll be honest. I, I haven't asked a whole lot of questions. Um, you know, all I've, all I've asked and all I've really talked to Mike and, and his staff or, or Vince and his staff is I want to make sure that our, our protocols are, are, are on point. I want to make sure we're safe. Um, but I haven't asked them a ton. And, and, and the reason I haven't asked is it puts them in a bad position. You know, they're voluntary workouts. Um, I, I got an idea of what guys are, are in town. Um, don't necessarily know who goes every single day. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but I do know a high percentage of our guys are in town. Um, but as far as a bunch of feedback, you got to remember, this is different. This is, um, this is this is totally up to our guys. It's totally up to everyone across college football. Um, it's not um, it's not something that I'm sitting there um, trying to trying to peek into a bunch. You know, I trust I trust our strength staff totally. I, I trust trust our athletic training staff, and I know the guys that are there are getting good work, and 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 they'll get them in a position where we're we're able to see them. On July thirteenth, for the for the first time, we'll be able to. I think the guys that are here will, will be in be in a good position. Next question from John. Go ahead, John. I'm trying to unmute you here. Got me unmuted. <clears throat> Hear me now. Yeah. Yeah, I got you, John. Uh, Coach, um, how do you adjust your schedule now? Well, you know, usually coaching staffs take their uh, retreats in the summertime leading into camp. But with the way things have been juggled, will you take your retreats early and then work right into training camp? How will you do it now with the, the schedules changing so much? Oh, the scheduling piece has is, is really been – it's been hard. Uh, been a nightmare, actually, John. I mean, because uh, whether it's vacation, you know, if you leave, you got to be on quarantine, which I understand I'm in favor of. Um, the quarantine is part of the process while we haven't had any, any of our positives. Uh, part of our voluntary workouts. Um, so, but we're we're probably not we're probably not going to do retreats this year as much, um, just out of out of out of safety concerns. Um, but we've had plenty of time to get ready. You know, to me, there's there's three important dates. There's a July 13th, which that's the beginning of what a, the eight hour rule. The 20 hour rule begins on on. July 24th, and I believe August 7th is the first day of fall camp. So those are the three dates that we've really been working to. And we're going to – this is this is not going to be uh, a normal college football year in any in any aspect. It's not going to be normal for our players. It's not going to be normal for our staff. It's not going to be normal for you all. And I don't know what it looks like. 
we might be on this all the time. I have no idea. I don't really know. Um, we try to put as put off making decisions as late as we can so we can get the most information. Um, but we are currently working through, John, a, a bunch of different models as far as anywhere from split practices and, and things like that, uh, uh, trying to do as many virtual meetings as possible or do outdoor meetings. Uh, we're going to put our players at as little risk as we possibly can. Just a reminder, use the uh, raise hand feature if you have questions. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, well, I'll keep going if nobody else. Um, hey, Coach, uh, several weeks ago, you were part of one of the, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests in downtown Morgantown. Just, you know, your feelings on, on why you thought it was important to be there. Um, you know, I, I made a statement shortly after, um, really shortly, shortly before the uh, – that 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 was one of the early protests here in, in Morgantown, um, and I thought the the people in charge of that protest did an extremely they were they were it was well prepared they did it very well. Um, you know here here's here's mine and and is is racism social injustice our major issues in our society, and I support our players I support the Black Lives Matter. Uh, I thought it was important for me. Um, I didn't want to be the story, um, and. But it, it's important for me to support our players. And we want to be part uh, of, of change. And, um, and so I thought it was important uh, for me to, to be in that, in, in that um, downtown with them and, so, and support our players. And, and we had, I don't know, ballparkish 15 to 20 that were there, Greg. Uh, next question here comes from Keenan. Go ahead, Keenan. Hey, Neil, thanks for doing this. Um, you guys have had kind of a policy, I guess, unspoken in a sense that you've only wanted to take commitments from guys that had visited. You said you might have to revisit that, you know, if the dead period extended. Have you changed anything to that? And then another question mm -hmm. I had as well is with, uh, with transfers. Are you still looking for an offensive lineman? So I'll answer the, the, the second question is yes. I mean, we're, we're – you heard me say this a bunch. We're always trying to continue to build our roster. Um, we're evaluating transfer alignment, but we're evaluating them at every position. We're always going to try to continue to build and, and, and improve our roster. That's something I think you got to continually do, especially in this, this age. Um, and then what was, what was the, uh, okay. Um, as far as the committing without being on campus, um, to this point, we've been able to, and I felt really strongly about it, uh, early in the process the longer this goes and not knowing exactly when prospects will get on campus, um, probably moving back from that a little bit, Keenan. You know, I just – I don't know how practical it's going to be. Um, we're getting better and better at these virtual tours and and, and how we're taking Morgantown, our, our university, our facilities, everything we're doing in our program to um, prospective student-athletes. We're getting better. And, and people are getting – you know, as they get closer to making decisions, um, then we have to be, we have to understand where they're coming from too. So I think that policy where I think it was good, but now the longer this stretched out, we may have to, we may have to reassess that. All right. Your next question here from Derek Red. Go ahead, Derek. Hi, Neil. With as many places as your kids were coming from to come back to campus and different States had different, you know, levels of, of infection, COVID-19, were you surprised, pleasantly surprised, uh, or, or that you only had two positive tests that have come back so far? And the second question, with what you've seen at happening at Clemson and LSU and Kansas State and Texas, has that affected your optimism at all for what you could see as a normal or somewhat normal start to the football season? Um. So the first question, we've had two positives. Um, I didn't. I didn't really have any expectations. Uh, I knew we were going to have to deal with um, the virus at some point. Um, we've tried to educate our players and our staff about the virus as much as we possibly can. Um, and you know, I'm hesitant to talk about it because a lot of it's out of our control. You know, we can control exactly what we do in our facility and how we go about our protocols and our precautions and our procedures. 
and how we do our testing. Um, but we don't, we don't have control over our student athletes 24 hours a day, nor do I want that. And so a lot of it is, is we're asking them and you know, we're trying to educate them on the best practices and hoping that they follow through. And, and so, um, I'm hopeful that we'll continue to keep our numbers down. Uh, we're going to take every precaution possible to make sure that doesn't happen while they're in workouts or practice or whatever that is. Um, and so um, we're going to continue to work. I'm not, I wouldn't use the word surprise. I don't know if I'm ever surprised, um, but we're going to use the, we're going to, we're going to continue to, to take every precaution possible. Um, and then the second one, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I've been, that's, I've used that term with you all before. Um, I, I just think it's going to be different. You know what I mean? I, I just think there, it's going to be unique. Um, I've, I've said this to our players and I'll say it to you all is like, there's not going to be a normal, any type of the normal activity. I don't know if we ever go back to normal. Um, but there's not going to be any type of normal activity until there's a vaccine. Um, but I'm co cautiously optimistic that we will be able to play football. That's that's how we're that's how we're preparing. I just think it's going to be different, and and how I think we got to be outside the box thinkers about how do we get our players to the games um, with keeping our virus numbers as low as possible and preventing injury. I think that's that's going to be um, the the most important issues. Next question here from Kevin Kinder. Go ahead, Kevin. Coach, could you expand a little bit on your comments on Usman? What is it that you've seen in him that makes you think he's going to be a big-time success in life? You know, things on the field, in the locker room, you know, just some of those examples. Yeah, well, he graduated, and he's currently in our NBA program. Um, I think how he handles himself, very mature. Um, I think he has great leadership skills, the first being uh, from a communication standpoint. Communicates very well. Um, in, in all settings and uh, extremely intelligent. And so I just think he has a bright future. And, um, and, and this kind of guy is, that's why, so we have special teams meetings now virtually with, whenever they change the rules. And I'm so impressed with him because I'll look around and we go to special teams meetings and this is how he's sitting. He's sitting, sitting up at a desk every time he has his pencil around, he's taking notes. And that's just a quick, like, who the kid is. And uh, so I'm proud of him. He earned that award. He's got the respect of not only our staff, but, but his teammates as well. All right, coach. Next question here from Adam Rittenberg. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, hey Neil. I just wondering, um, is there a number uh, that you need to go to a game with of healthy players that you've talked about with your staff, whether it's, you know, 50, 55, whatever it is. Um, and there's also your reaction to the number of, of just asymptomatic positives that we've seen uh, maybe in your program, but especially around the country, that most of these positive tests with players are not with symptoms rather than with symptoms. All right, so both of the cases in our program are asymptomatic. Um, I'm a novice in this whole virus. I mean, I just, I learn, and you know, um, so, um, I'm not in our age bracket that we're dealing with. I'm not surprised about the asymptomatic. Um, Adam, I, as far as numbers, um, we've got a plan about how we want to go about um, trying to trying to keep our guys separated. Um, we haven't got to an exact number, like how many numbers we need to, to participate or what's the lowest number we could play a game with. Haven't gotten that point yet. Uh, hopefully I don't have to. Um, and, and, and really that's kind of, that's not, next week is when I go into all the different scenario planning uh, about going into this unique season. Uh, next question here from Jerry. Jerry, trying to unmute you here. Go ahead. Okay, Coach. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Neil. Um, you mentioned a while ago that this is not going to be a normal uh, football season on a lot of levels. How would that abnormality carry over uh, to the to the field, the on-field product. I'm talking about maybe a, a lack of efficiency on offense, maybe being in the wrong alignments on defense every once in a while. How's that going to manifest manifest itself? Well, I think that you have experts in the in in this in the coaching profession. Um, I think you have athletes that 
um, are capable of playing a high level. I think that you find coaches that have taken the best that have that have maximized this virtual learning as much as possible. And uh, it's uh, I uh, and so I, as far as the product, I think you're going to see a simpler product. Maybe you know I don't know if if you'll have as much time or your uh, practice time is probably going to be at a premium. Um, I don't know if you'll have as much good on good work, you know, ones versus ones, um, as you normally would. Um, and so will the product be as clean, especially earlier in the year? I'm not sure. Will the average fan be able to see that? I'm not sure, but I, but I have faith in, in, in the players playing at this level and the coaches that it's going to be a, it's going to be a product that, that fans of college football will enjoy. Um, it's, it's more of the preparation that's going to be different. Um, and so, you know, we're talking about anything from, you know, if you start thinking about it, you don't want your top two people to, in any given position necessarily practicing or being in the same meeting room because you could lose them both, you know, and then you're down to your third. And so it's just about how you're going to separate your guys. That's where the extreme planning is. Next question here from Mike Kazaza. Mike, go ahead. You want to unmute yourself there, Mike? It's not letting me unmute you. There you go. That? Um, this is kind of continuous, Neil, but um, you mentioned splitting practices up, splitting meetings up. Uh, that may very well become the new normal, but how much of a challenge is that for, for players or even for coaches to maybe do twice as much work or for players to be in a, a beyond unique environment there for perhaps an entire season? You know, it's, I don't think it's going to be as big adjustment for the players. And what I mean by that is, is like, I think what you're going to, what you're going to see is like, and this is kind of what we're working through is you're going to see a combination of virtual meetings and then, um, socially distant meetings and the things you have to do in person, you'll do in person, but those will be minimal. And the things that don't have to be that you can get done in a setting like this, you'll do that and, and stay and use your precautions. Um, uh, the real, the real, and it's planning. All right. Because you start planning and you, you've got all these protocols, you got to, you know, not just masks, not just social distance, but cleaning and um, the benefit, the indoor outdoor, um, and then you start talking about split practices. That's where it really comes in with your, with your coaches and your coaches got to be in shape. Um, you got to do so. It's going to take some preparation time. You know, it's going to take some preparation time away. So like, I'll give you an example. Let's say on a Tuesday practice, Mike is, you know, you got all morning. All right. We practice at, you know, I think our first meetings at two forty-five. So you really got all day to prepare. Well, let's say that you're into where you have to go split. And let's say, for instance, your ones and threes practice together and your twos and fours practice together. So what I mean by that is your one and three offense. I don't want to say this is what we're going to do. I'm just thinking we're thinking through all different scenarios right now. I don't have all the answers or I'd sit here and tell you what we're doing. Um, but let's say you go through and you're going to have your ones and three offense practice with your twos and fours defense. And then your one and three defense is going to practice with your twos and fours offense. And you're going to have two practices. Well, you're going to lose that prep time because you're now you're going to, you know, normally you're going to prep, you're going to have meetings 245, boom, you're going to meet, you're going to walk through, you're going to practice, you're going to have dinner, and then you're going to meet as a staff at the, leading into the evening. Well, now if you go to split practice, your practice has got to be shorter, and there's got to be time to clean in between all this stuff, and it's just going to – and you're going to go – you're going to eat up more time, and it's going to take away from preparation. And that's why I think some of it is going to be um, – you know, it's going to be a little bit of a simpler game. You know, not as may, maybe not as many game plan adjustments or weekly adjustments as you would normally see in college football. All right, we have a question here from Keenan. Go ahead, Keenan. Neil, you mentioned getting more effective with those virtual visits, kind of getting more efficient with them. What have you learned about that? And is that something you think you guys could carry over even maybe when things do return to normal? Oh, we ain't got enough time to talk about all the stuff I've learned technology wise. Like, uh, Google Maps, like the way you can – I didn't know any of that stuff was possible. Um, so, and I didn't think we've got efficient. We've been – we, you know, our recruiting staff and Katie Gesto and, and, and really that whole group led by Coleman Barnes, they've done a really good job of, of – and we've done multiple 
virtual visits with guys. Um, you know, it's, I, I think that's, I think you have to, I think you got to take, you know, I always say, Hey, we can't, you can't come up to country roads, West Virginia. So we're trying to take country roads to, to you. And that's what we're trying to do. We'll go ahead and do uh, two more questions here. Next one from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Coach, is part of what you were talking about there earlier with practice, but also games, depth situations are always a concern, but you have to do a lot more cross-training. Safeties better learn cornerback positions. Running backs better learn fullbacks, you know, job just to be safe in this whole endeavor. Yeah, so that's something that we are. We're going to have we're gonna have to have some crossover, you know, and probably be more so in meetings than it will be um, on, on field practicing, but I think – you got to have some guys that have the ability to cross over. It's easier to do at your skill positions, okay? Um, but I think you have to have you have to have that. Um, and so, you know, you name it. Like like I said, next week's kind of my scenario week where you go through all this stuff and you try to think through all the scenarios. Um, but that's definitely been a topic, Greg, that we've talked about, and we are. Some of the wideouts are going to have to cross train as safeties and corners. Some of the corner safeties are going to have to we're going to have to teach them you know, uh, some base formations and base routes. Um, you know, uh, you know, some of our DNs might have to learn tight end. You know, I think we, you, you have to do some of that. Um, and what it's done, I'll, I'll tell you, these, like the, the virtual um, meetings we've had is one thing that as a staff, we should be better our teachers. We should be significantly better teachers uh, coming out of this. And um, our football knowledge as a, a as a as a program and I mean from an individual perspective we should be better because that's something that should grow during this time uh go ahead Alex Hickey trying to mute you here there you go yep. um I wanted to ask this a very general question just based on yesterday's situation without specifically being about it is and it's just sort of what steps have you taken or you know, what steps need to be taken within the program for players to feel comfortable I mean, coming forward if they have difficult situations or uncomfortable dis situations that they want to discuss with you? What, what sort of steps have been taken within the culture to make that possible? Yep. Alex, no, good, good to have you back there. Um, so I can't, I can't talk about yesterday. All right. Um, we, we, we have an open policy, um, and I think that you continue to learn. You try. You continue to get feedback, and um, if that's an area where we need to grow, then we need to grow. Um, but I feel confident in in our in in being able to talk, and um, our guys have a voice. I respect that voice. That's their right, and um, that's that's what I'll say on that matter. All right, we're actually going to finish up with these couple here. Uh, Mike, go ahead and unmute yourself. There you go. All right, yeah, sorry. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff you're talking about here, the, it's complex. There's a bunch of layers. Um, it's not ideal. It's all football, and it's coincided with some extracurricular stuff um, that I imagine makes this even trickier for you, too. What sort of a factor has that been with you with communicating with players and engaging their moods and trying to keep football as forward moving as you can, despite probably worthwhile diversions of their time and interest right now. Yeah. the challenging times, Mike. I think it's challenging times probably in a lot of your professional careers too. Um, and you just try to navigate it. There's, you know, you, know, you think about the different aspects we've talking on our, on this call, you know, if we do we have any of these conversations, you know, our lead into spring, no, you know, it's um, dealing with issues and, and, and things, whether it's medical related, um, whatever, it's just, these are, it's complex times and you're going into um, really new territory at all, at all points. And I think you just gotta, unfortunately you can't have a plan for everything. Um, and so we're learning as we're as we're going, um, trying to be proactive rather than reactive. Um, but it is a difficult time. I think a lot of and I think there's a lot of challenging and difficult times right now in a lot of different professions. Though, 
Uh, next question here from Christopher Hall. Chris, go ahead and unmute yourself, bud. There you go. Appreciate your time today, Coach. Um, now that you're kind of looking ahead here to practice coming up, uh, you didn't have the spring evaluation period. Uh, how confident are you that one of your quarterbacks uh, can solidify the starting position opening, going into the opening game? Yeah, I, I've been extremely pleased with our quarterbacks during during this pandemic and, and the period of virtual learning. Um, I think both of them have done an exceptional job from a leadership standpoint. I think you see our accountability teams, both of those guys, Dagey and Kendall's team, have both uh, – <clears throat> Have, have risen to the top of those standings. Uh, I think it's important to note that Garrett Green's a part of Darius Steele's team, and he's in third position, and, and Darius is a leader in that group, but Garrett's been really active. Um, and I'm proud of how they've, they've gone about not only attacking that leadership role, but learning and growing as football players, you know, through this virtual learning, just defense recognition, coverages, protections, those type of things. Um, They'll be ready to go. Whenever we start, those two are going to be ready to go. They're going to compete and and the and and more power to whoever wins. But I think we got we got two guys that I've been extremely pleased with and they're more capable of leading our football team. All right, coach. Last question here from Alan Saunders. Alan, I think you're gonna to to unmute yourself. There you go. Thank you. Hey Neil, I appreciate your time. Uh I just with uh, Vic placed on leave, I wondered of what you know he would have been working on at this time and maybe who and how you uh spread out that additional workload at this moment yeah we're not I'm not going to get into that right now honestly I'm a, I'm a, not going to talk about any personnel kind of leave that standing um okay thank we'll you very much for you. your time coach. Now, hold on Mikey we got to finish up with coach man let's see what he's got oh okay my fault coach Hunter no I didn't have one no it wasn't me all right I right. somebody was pointing finger my bad <laughs> Hey guys, um, everybody on here, I, I appreciate, appreciate what y'all do. Um, and, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get to the, do this in a non virtual manner at some point, but y'all have a good day. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time coach. And thank